the simulation, the setup is there's a big monopoly in the industry. All right? And then, because they are so big, so there's uh, deregulation. All right? Deregulation means they break down this big monopoly into many smaller companies to create competition. So you, you are now will run, each of the team will run the exact equal same conditions company that compete for profit, okay? Your product is sensors. What is sensors? Sensor is, sensor is for using for computer for high-tech devices, right? So you're gonna sell that. <clears throat> These are the objectives of the simulation, okay? Demonstrate effectiveness of multidiscipline. I told you earlier, this game, you have to integrate all of the functional decision, the functional management skill, and anything that you learn throughout the program to apply into this game. And you have to use a lot of strategic thinking. You want to outperform your rivals. You want to outperform the other team to win the game. It's just exactly the same with business, right? Real world business. All they do is try to find, find out how to outperform the others to survive, right, and to, 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 uh, to grow. Uh, test your business acumen. Mm -hmm. How much you learn about this, okay? Uh, understand overall interactions and impact of, you know, various parts of the organization. Again, marketing, uh, R&D, operation management, human resources, finance, all types of that will come together. <coughs> and um, <clears throat> you will have to pay attention a lot to competitions. Now you don't run your business alone, right? You have to compete with others for profit or for other criteria. Uh, take away practical know-how to improve the effectiveness of your business. Okay? Why we do simulations? Risk-free. Now, the, the consequence, the punishment of losing this game is just a few points of your grade. Right? But in reality, if you make this decision, if you make it wrong, if you fail, guess what? Millions. You're out of business, okay? So that's why it's good to play this before you actually start a real business. So you can play, you can make mistakes, okay? But the consequence is only a few points of your grades, but you learn a lot from it, okay? You can view different strategies here. Now, if you review, uh, we talked a little bit about, remember we talked about Michael Porter, Five Horses? Local leadership, right? Differentiations, focus, right? Integrated uh, uh, strategies. That's what you can apply here. Okay? It's very enjoyable. Uh, now, I've been teaching this course for so many years, and my students give very positive feedback about the game. They say, at first, it's overwhelmed with information, with data, with everything. It's so overwhelmed. There's so much thing that you need to know. But once you get into it by the third week, I guarantee you it's very, very enjoyable. You love to play the game. In fact, I have a student, after we finish the course, email me and say, I miss playing the game. I want to continue to play the game. That's tell you how enjoyable it is, okay? Um, Compress is time. That means we're gonna have eight rounds that we run throughout the simulation. Each round represents one year. So everything you plan for this round will happen for that next year, completely next year, okay? And uh, there's a lot of integration decision here, <laughs> okay? Sensor industry. Here's some basic information about your own product, okay? And you can view it on a PDF on the PowerPoint. The marketplace here, you can look, you will see this map very familiar when you make decision. We call it perceptual map of customer demand. In this, in this simulation, we're gonna have one product that will be sold into two different segments. We call it low-tech and high-tech, okay? Think about this as low-end product and high-end product. Okay, you have one product right now. And there are two criteria that we apply for the position. We call it size and performance. Now, for the sensor, the customer always want a better performance and a smaller size sensor, correct? That's how the market moving forward, okay? So if you look at this perceptual map here, 
the futures or how how the course how the simulation run is this market demand will drip down like this because it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller and it perform better and better and better right just think about laptop think about ipad right 10 years ago 15 years ago we have a big computer right all of the parts in there is really big but look at now ipad really tight thin right so the sensor is getting smaller but perform a lot more than the regular computers. So think about that way when you make a strategic decision for your sensors, for your products, okay? So over the eight years, the market demand will shift like this, okay? Down and further to the right corner. That's how it works. Now, for low-tech customers, all I want is a cheap product. I want a reliable, I mean a fairly you know, acceptable uh, quality, but I want it cheap. So what is the main criteria here to sell? Price. Right? You compete on price. Uh, I want them to have been around for a while. I don't want a brand new product. I want something that's been there for a while. That's why I can take advantage of it by buying it a little cheaper. Okay. I'm not that type of person who, you know, follow high tech and whenever the, the, the new product comes out, I want to buy it. No. I'm the guy who wants to buy, you know, a product for about three years old, a little cheaper. Okay. That's my demand. That's, that's my demand for this. Okay. They have to be moderately reliable. I want to buy cheap stuff, but I don't want to buy junk. Okay. So I want to buy something that, you know, at least have acceptable quality, but good price. The technology doesn't have to be cutting edge. Again, three years, four years old, that's fine. Okay? It has, these are the typical uh, customer for this particular segment. So you can guess what's going to be for the high end. Alright? For high end or high tech customer here, I want the best product out there. I want the brand new product. I want the one that, you know, functions really well, cool stuff out there. Okay? I want it to be small. Because I want to make, you know, really small uh, device here. I want it to perform faster and faster. Okay? Uh, I, need to be, I need them to be right out on R&D, brand new. Look at Apple's company, like in this case. Right? iPad, iPhone, all of their stuff is really new, smaller and smaller and smaller. But perform much better. Okay? I'm talking about zero, zero years on the market. Brand new. Okay? I'm willing to pay more to get what I want. In this case, because I demand a brand new product and I have a little, you know, disposable income, I would love to pay a little more for, for, for the product, okay? I like pretty high reliability. Oh, this product must be good because I pay a lot more for it, okay? So now you have, typically you have two different customer demand representing in two different segments. Okay, so if you are a business owner, if you run a sense of business, how are you going to target these two segments with your product to make sure that you can win that market? Okay, that's your job. That's how you're going to make a strategic decisions. All right. Here's the sensor industry. The setting that I chose for this class is a stable or steady growth. That means the market demand grows this, with the same rate every single year. Okay, for the high end, high tech market, it's going to be uh, twenty percent, and for the low end, it's going to be ten percent. So <clears throat> you can see the sensor industry, the market grows. Now, unlike reality. We have recession, you know, when the, the market, you know, demand is kind of going down slowly, you know. But in this game, I try to set up a little bit steady for you, make the game a little easier uh, to work on, all right? Uh, I already uh, talked about it earlier. It's one big giant monopoly, right, broken down into small, equally uh, small companies. There are six companies or six teams competing in this game. Um, if you look at the name, Andrews, Ball, Winchester, Digby, Airy, and Ferris, A, B, C, D, right? Alphabetically in order, okay? Um, it's a $40 million in sales company, one product line, two segments, right? Closed market. What does it mean by closed market? What that means is only six of you competing for this, no other rivals there, okay? 
So you compete against the other five for the profit, okay? So later on, you will sign up into each of these uh, teams. I put it there, it's just, you know, uh, start up the game. Yeah. Again, in this game, you have to coordinate all of the functional strategies into a big uh, strategic uh, decision for the entire organization. You're going to make decisions on R&D, marketing, production, and finance. And later on, in round two and round three, there are additional modules that the HR and TQM that you can make decisions on. I'll talk more about this. Uh, in R&D, R&D you make decisions based on the positions of the product in the, in the market. Okay? You're going to make decisions on how to change the performance, how to change the size, how to change the MTBF here, which means mean time between failure. In other words, is reliability of the product. Okay? Uh, make sure that the age match the criteria. You can also launch a new product, create a new product beside what you already have. Okay, I'll show you step by step. Okay. Marketing, basically you make decisions on the price and you also make decisions on the promotion budgets and the sales budgets. Okay. Our productions you make decision on the capacities, on how many products you want to produce. Are you going to use second shift or not? Uh, we're going to talk about automation rating. Uh, we're going to talk about if they want to buy more capacity or you want to sell capacity because you know we don't need that many. Okay, we'll talk about that. Finance. We also talk about this. This is one of the big um, decisions that you have to make in here. Uh, there are three ways to kind of raise your cash flow. All right. You can issue stock, you can borrow current debt or short-term debt, or you can issue long-term bond, okay? I will talk more about this. You can also issue dividends when you make money, right? You have extra cash left, you can pay dividends, okay? I hope that you're familiar with all of these terms because you already took the finance course, right? Uh, but you can also balance your debt portfolio, you know, pay off your debt early or, you know, in due time to make sure that you have a good uh, financial cash flow, cash flow and uh, manage your uh, performance, okay? Uh, there's a function in there that you can go and check all the performance in here. You have balance sheet, profit and loss, cash flow, financial ratio, okay? You can check on that and make sure that you're on the right target. For this class, the success measures is the cumulative profit, okay? So what I want you to do is a long-term focus, not just one year or two years. You have to focus all eight years to make sure at year eight, at the last year, last round, you accumulate the best profit, the highest profit to win the game, okay? Again. Cumulative profit is my measure for success for this class. Okay. Uh, about running this, I will um, explain more when we talk about the uh, functional, uh, the, the simulation. Okay.